Festa online. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and in this class, we're going to learn how to use Pfeffilter Pro C2, Pfeffilter Pro L2, and Pfeffilter Pro Q3. Now, these plugins make up part of the mixing and mastering suite, so they can do really creative work and also really precise work. So I'm going to show you a little bit of both. I'm going to make some sound design with Pro Q3, Pro C2, and we're going to wrap them all up and do a little quick master using these plugins. And I'm also, also going to show you some creative ways to use Pro Q3 on the master bus. All right. Without further ado, let's take a listen to this uh, techno track that I'm using for our demo. All right, so there we go. I was trying to get a clean fade out of that. But that's the techno track that we're using. Now, let's come back a little bit back to bar 33. Here we can appreciate there's a lots of different sounds before the kick drum comes in. And I want to show you the build up essentially here. Now I'm using a few different plugins here to create this tension and this bigger impact at the beginning of the drop. So I have the Pro Q3. Of course, it's doing your typical DJing filtering. However, because I'm using Pro Q3, I don't have to worry about a lot of phasing issues, a lot of cramping that you would get, you would get if you're using a, uh, a low cut as well. If you were trying to do a low cut, you wouldn't have to worry about cramping up there because Pro Q3 is a really high quality filter. Now I'm just automating this on my track over here. As you can see, I begin automating it around bar 33 and I'm slowly bringing it up in the frequency over here. Boom. And over here I have a Pro R and I'm also automating the input level of my compressor. <laughs> So as we're building up, I'm removing the low frequencies and I'm also backing up from the compression that's going from the Pro C2 into the limiter as well. So I'm backing off all that. And then once the drop comes in, boom, I give everything back to the listener, all the frequencies and all the dynamics or lack thereof. So yeah, that's one way to make your drops a little bit more impactful. This works really well on the dance floor. If you have a pretty compressed track, and you're just trying to make some space for the listener's ears to like reset. But this also works really well if you're working on music yourself. So that's a really cool, uh, useful tip. And because you're using such high quality plugins, you don't have to worry about cramping and any bass issues that you would get with typical um, low end DJ style plugins. Anyway, so that's how to do that. Now, while we're on topic, 
about the master channel. Let's make um, some selection here. Let me make a new loop here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to run through Procure 3 and we're going to see some of the features here. You see this? This is called the spectrum grab. What this is, is basically any resonance that I have holding onto by leaving the mouse flat on my, on my desk without moving it. I can catch some resonances and bring them down. So you hear how like now some of the chirps aren't as present. Now, if I didn't want this to be static EQ, I can reset the band gain right there. Press, uh, press uh, left click and drag down while I'm on that wheel. And this will activate dynamic EQ. If I want this to be less apparent, I can push this up and get out of the auto feature, bring this down a little bit. And there we go. That's a cool little trick to um, attenuate some resonances that you have up there. And this could also work really well if you have like a guitar. Let's say you just have a guitar down here that's on around, let's say, 400-ish hertz. And it says on the left channel. And you want to say, hey, I'm, I want, I'd like to attenuate just the left channel. You can do so if we come down here on this band and say, hey, let's grab just the left channel. We can do so. And because we have that dynamic EQ, we can just tuck it in every now and then. Just like we did with the acid bass lines out here. By the way, um, I think a better solution for this would be use the side mode for these guys. That way we're not affecting the punch of the kick drum and we're just tucking in the stuff that's on the side channel. So that's pretty amazing, right? So we cleaned up and made sure that the center channel is perfect, intact, and that the side channels are now, you know, getting tucked in and it happens. So when the resonance come in, they're tucked in, they're attenuated a little bit. But now check this out. We're also reducing that uh, part of the side channel when we also have some of the hi-hat come in. You see that? Now, what if there was a way to have that not attenuated when the hi-hat comes in, but only when the synth line comes in? Well, we can. We can use this to work with an external sidechain. See this? Here menu says, the external sidechain button lets you toggle between triggering, triggering on the band limited, possibly MS encoded plug-in signal, or the unprocessed external sidechain input. Triggering an external sidechain input is only possible when using a custom threshold that is not available in auto mode. All right, so we can select a sidechain input via our plugin here and Cubase. So we're going to come up here. We're going to select the input sidechain. We're going to use the NOR lead to 
Here we go. That's going to be our sidechain track. And of course, we're going to make sure it's activated. And we're going to come up here, select sidechain. By the way, we can use an external spectrum from another source as well. And now. Now that sidechain is a lot less, uh, or that ducking is a lot less present. What we could also do is we can clone our track. Let's clone this track. And now what I'll do is I'll use another Pro-Q3 um, and just place it in front of that track. Do a high pass filter. Like that, and just focus on that band. And then we can mute some of these uh, parameters here. And then I'll just not send it to no bus, basically. And we'll use that as our sidechain. Go back to our master, ProQ3. And I'm going to use a different sidechain source. See that? The duplicate's there now. How cool is that? That is absolutely amazing. So with just one plugin, we're able to do a high cut. We're able to do some sidechain um, uh, spectral removal, basically, on our side channels. And we're, we're still able to use, I believe, 23 more bands. Because I think we have 20, uh, 26, 28 bands in total. So we still have so many more possibilities with this one plugin. This is a really essential plugin when it comes to mastering, mixing, and sound design. As you heard, we able to duck out stuff from just one channel or the side channel as we did right here. But we could also do it, let's say we had a sample with um, a crash and there was like a little ringing on the left channel. We can duck that. All right, we're gonna hop over to the next plugin I'm gonna show you, which is Path Filter Pro C2. I'm gonna show you that with the snare drum, all right? We're gonna sound design it and make it sound from like an acoustic drum to like something that's like hard hitting like EDM snare drum. Let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so here with the snare, I have a bunch of Pro C2s open, a Pro Q3, and more Pro C2s and a Pro L. Why, why do I have so many Dynamics plugins turned on? Why can't I just um, uh, use one compressor? Well, we're gonna find out right now why. I have a gain match turned on right here. So we don't trick our ears. If we zoom in here, you can see that the transient's a little bit small. This is what I want to bring up, and I want to attenuate some of this and bring some of this up. So why can't we just do that with uh, one compressor? Well, it just doesn't work like that. We'll see right now why. Let's turn off everything and start off with the Pro C2. And 
we get a really quiet signal. Don't worry. We're going to bring it up. Now here, I'm doing lots of compression, 29 dBs of compression. Basically compressing everything but the attack of the kick is I'm leaving 42 milliseconds open. I'm doing a little bit of a hold. Look ahead. Let's turn on as well. The release is, is a little bit quick. 95 dBs. I mean, uh, 95 uh, milliseconds. The ratio is 541 to 1. So the knee is at 18 dB. Not too uh, smooth. They're not too steep. So perfectly in the middle. Now when I close this guy, I'm going to use a Pro Q3. To bring some woodiness into the snare, kind of like a, you know, kind of the room in. Let's turn off these guys and some high end as well that I'm bringing in. Start off with the high end. A little bit of crispiness. Because the snare sounds kind of muted. And then I'm bringing some of that room in. And then, you know, making it sound like, like a piece of wood smacking something or, you know, a little pitch envelope on a snare dr uh, drum synthesizer. Of course, I'm being very drastic with this because I know I'm going to compress everything and this is also going to get ducked a little bit. But I wanted to make it, you know, be a lot more present. So this is actually almost 20 dBs of boost right there. But we get the result we want. Now we add a Pro C2. And this Pro C2 is doing a, a, a harder knee right here. And it's bringing down some of that that we which we brought in. Um, why are we doing this? Well, not because we're going to basically dug down a specific re frequency, but because we're switching things together in basically with the dynamics. I'm letting some of the attack come through, 47. And then the release is pretty quick, so we come back up quicker. No hold in this case, and the knees 1 dB. Okay? Then the next Pro C2. Doing a little bit of the same, but harder ratio, threshold's even lower, and our attack is a little bit slower, and the release is a lot slower. If we were to make it too short, too much of that room would come back in too soon. So we want to make it nice and tight like that. And then I'm using another Pro C2. And this one's going to cut off, chop off the transient. So right there, you may think, hey, that sounds a lot better. But in the context of the mix, um, it the sound would poke out a little bit, but then the room tone would not poke through. Let's bring that down. Okay, somewhere around there. We have really quick release, much quicker attack, two milliseconds. So keep that in mind. And then I'm using a Pro L to absolutely just chop everything off. And make sure that basically the room tone is almost level with the transient. Yes, that sounds horrible in the context of a mix that's, you know, for acoustic. But for EDM, this is good. <laughs> so it's not just all about dynamics, it's also about sound design. So that's very important. Of course, I got to bring that game match back up. Awesome. Another reason why we don't want to have all that dynamic information um, is because we want the kick to be the loudest part still. 
if we don't do this, if, if we leave this to breathe a lot more. Now that little snare hit is too loud. So it removes from the impact of the kick drum. So we want to make sure that's nicely tucked in there. All right. So that's, you know, some cool ways to do some sound design with the Pro C2. Now I'm going to show you some cool uh, tips real quick. So here I have a, a click. I have a copy of it, which I'm using as a sidechain trigger that's going into my uh, bass right here. Okay. Let's turn on the, the click. Now I'm using Pro C2 to create the sidechain. There's other different types of uh, compressors built into Pro C2. There's a classic opto vocal mastering bus punch and pumping, which all complement each other and are very different from the clean one. If we go through them, you'll see why. So they all sound very interesting, very different from each other. So I suggest you bounce around through some of them to find out what's the best for your um, track. In my case, I think the pumping with the shorter release works really well, almost like the clean, but But with the pumping, you get the dip um, right here. It's a lot steeper. So that knee functions a lot steeper. So give it a shot. It works for um, bases like this, but it might also work for, let's say, some gates. If you want something smoother, though, for vocals, go for opto vocal and the classic as well. They work really well. Mastering busts are really smooth, really, really smooth to the point where it's kind of hard to use them on uh, individual instruments, but in the context of a mix or a bus, awesome. So keep that in mind. Okay, now to wrap up this video, I want to show you some stuff with Pro L2. Now, Pro L2 is my plugin of choice when it comes to uh, mastering, also just regular limiting throughout my track. Uh, as you saw earlier with the snare, sounds fantastic still. Uh, even though you're doing lots of compression beforehand. And here, to start off, we have on the left-hand corner the gain control, of course. In the center here, we have this dynamics view where it shows you the envelope. We see the the uh, difference between the peak, your zero dB and the quiet parts. And then on the right hand side, we have a meter, which can be depending on your preference. Minus 16, minus 32, minus 48, K12, K14, K20 stick out 
or in my case, it's just loudness. And we can set this to however we want. CD, minus 14 for streaming, minus 23 for EBUR 128, minus 24 for ATSC, or it can be custom, you know, whatever you want. In my case, I'll go for 14 because that's mostly what we're doing for delivery. We have a short-term integrated momentary and we can reset right there. You can even pause it there too. So overall, we get a really comprehensive analytical view of our track. There's dither down here, oversampling up to 32 bit or up to 32 times shot, I should say. And we have bypass right there, DC offset removal, side chain. And we have the option to listen to how much uh, limiting we're doing. So let's go back to the drop of the track. Hear that? That's all we're limiting. Okay. Pretty cool. We have uh, true peak limiting. We can also detect the um, the display mode here. So we can change that those settings there. Um. We have different styles as well. We have transparent, punchy, dynamic, all around, aggressive, modern, buzz, safe. And just like with Pro C2, the, you, there's something that you're going to use um, depending on the situation. Uh, aggressive sounds really good for like hard style, really fast music. Um, modern and bus uh, are quite different. Modern is sounds pretty good all around for pop music. Bus and save mode, safe mode, I should say, sorry, is um, really slow. Let's take a listen. In my case, for this one, I like the dynamic mode because I feel like I still have some movement in my track. Um, the bus and the save are really slow. So it's up to you to decide what you want to use. A cool uh, trick that I like to use here is um, the transient looking. Now, if you're working with something like jazz music, you might not want to duck your whole entire track when you have one loud instrument, um, especially if you have the instrument pan just to the like, left channel or to the right channel. Um, you might want to just duck that one individual channel at a time. So you can do that with the channel linking. Let's say I wanted to put this little um, filter twin. Let's say I want to pan it really hard to the left and make it a lot louder in my mix. Okay. Now I can use the uh, Pro L. I can use Pro L. And with linking the transients or the release or unlinking them, uh, you're able to basically duck the left channel based on just the information of the left channel and not just and not what's going on in the right channel or the center channel. So this is really, really helpful. Um, again, it might not be the best option for this type of music, but for something like jazz or uh, something that's more atmospheric, it's the way to go, guys. Again, that Pro Bundle from Fat Filter, man, they're amazing plugins. They're just so good to use. Just about wraps it up for my video. I hope you enjoyed it. That you learned something new today. Um, once again, I'm Kevin Ultra with Insta Online. Make sure you give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. And make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss up on any of our upcoming content here. And I hope to see you at one of our Insta Festas uh, soon. Whether it's in person or online. I hope to see you there. Peace. Bye -bye.